its most visited, talked about and photographed areas in London. Its heritage and culture attract both locals and tourists alike. And if you want to see what London is actually all about, Covent Garden is a great area to start. Now, I've been living here for seven years and it is honestly one of my favorite areas to visit. I love how exciting, how vibrant and how always different the area is. From Kirky streets to grandness of buildings to new launches, there is always something exciting happening and I'm always very excited to return back. I decided to dive deep and find out more about my favorite area and here are my 55 facts about Covent Garden. Number one, the name of Covent Garden was a spelling mistake. It's supposed to be the Convent Garden, the market of convents of Westminster Abbey. Number two, Covent Garden is considered to be the most popular tourist attraction in the world. 44 million people are visiting this area per year. In comparison, New York's Times Square receives about 50 million. Number three, many generations of locals have been living here side by side. Nowadays, the approximate population number is 6,519 people. Number four, Common Garden was the first residential square laid out in London in 1930 as a piazza. Number five, the iconic market building was not built till much later, 1830, by the architect Charles Follier, and it remains the heart of Covent Garden to this day. Number six, for nearly 300 years, this area supplied central London with fruits and vegetables and looked very different to what it is today. Number seven, by the end of 1960s, the traffic congestion was causing some serious troubles and the decision was made to move Covent Garden veg and fruit market to the Vauxhall area. The market building was left empty. Number eight, the Greater London Council was planning to tore down both the piazza and the market building, but brave Londoners protested and managed to get building listed, which means it can never get demolished. Number nine, shortly the whole Covent Garden area was repurposed into this amazing shopping destination with some of the best bars, cafes, foodie spots and beauty retailers that can be found here. Number 10, there are two markets in Covent Garden area. One, the Apple Market, which is historically known for fruits and vegetables. The other, Jubilee Market, which was reopened by Queen Victoria in 1987. Number 11, like anything in London, these markets have a specific schedule. Mondays is for antiques and collectibles, Tuesday to Thursday is general market and Sunday is for arts and crafts. So be sure to check the schedule beforehand and enjoy the market experience. Number 12, personal favourite fact. Common Garden area has its own gardener. Kenny, who works here as a head gardener, is in charge of plant installations such as these ones and he's working really hard around the area to make sure that they look all healthy and beautiful. Number 13, Colum Garden changes their display with each season and makes them extra beautiful for main holidays. So the area doesn't stay the same for too long and it's always a pleasure to walk through. Number 14, last Halloween, Colum Garden welcomed a 120 kilo pumpkin for the main Halloween display. Can somebody actually calculate how many pumpkin pies is that? Number 15, this church was designed and reconstructed by Inigo Jones, the same person who helped to shape Common Garden Piazza. It's called St. Paul's Church and not to be confused with St. Paul's Cathedral. Number 16, this is where the greatest door was supposed to be. Initially, that meant to be the main entrance of the church and the altar supposed to be on the west side of the church. However, it went against the Christian tradition as the altar always meant to be on the east side. Hence, this entrance got closed. Now, this is the main entrance. Number 17, this is the amazing Royal Opera House building. However, it was not always named like that. Between 1847 and 1884, it was called Royal Italian Opera. Number 18, the Royal Opera House building has one of the best viewing points on Covent Garden. The rooftop balcony is the perfect place to unwind and enjoy a beautiful sunset with a glass of bubbly. Number 19, there are blue and green plaques dotted around the area. Blue plaques mark the buildings where notable people used to live. Green plaques mark buildings of general interest. Number 20. One of my favorite blue plaques is on Henrietta 10, where Jane Austen used to live. She's a remarkable author and also wrote one of my favorite novels, Pride and Prejudice. Number 21. This is my favorite green plaque. It's an iconic Ivy Cafe that has been open here since 1917. 
beautiful Art Deco that makes it a perfect cafe for a historic and a trendy visit. Number 22. This is Rules. It was established in 1798, which makes it the oldest restaurant in London. Serves British cuisine. Number 23. Fun fact. This restaurant was used as a shooting location for James Bond's latest adventure, Spectre, in 2005. Number 24. Talking about movies, Goodwin Court, Cecil Street and a great Newport Street have all been used for the Harry Potter movies and they can be all found here in Covent Garden area. Number 25, Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy, the movie about a serial killer in Covent Garden was also shot here in Covent Garden market area. 26, Alfred Hitchcock's father was actually one of the merchants at Fruit and Wedge Market here in Covent Garden. Number 27, the Covent Garden Underground Station was built in 1907 and has been running ever since. Number 28, the journey between Covent Garden and Leicester Square is 0.61 miles, aka 260 meters, and takes about 20 seconds. And it is the shortest journey in London Underground Network. Number 29. Covent Garden is vastly known for its street performance and in fact Covent Garden is the only district in London to have a license for street performance and entertainers. Number 30. Covent Garden has Victorian gas lamps dotted around. British Gas has released an interactive map taking you on a gas lamp tour all the way from the Queen residence at Buckingham Palace to Covent Garden. Number 31. Covent Garden has its own magazine, it's called The Covent Gardener and you can find free copy in any of the local coffee shops, restaurants and the main square such as this one here. I highly recommend it to anyone who likes to know a little bit more about the history and also the artwork is pretty stunning. Number 32. A typical property in Covent Garden goes for about £1 million. The average flat, emphasis on average, goes for £680,000 and a lovely terrace house is yours for £2.1 million. A lot of pounds, basically a lot of pounds. Number 33. For the most unique viewing and dining experiences, not only in Covent Garden area but London in general, the recently opened Sushi Samba should be on your radar. Number 34. For a quality steak and a good time all around, Flatiron is your place to go. Dream you're popular with locals, so expect the queues and call in advance. Number 35. Grind, known for their iconic red cups. It's a perfect hidden oasis to mix with locals and enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning and a cocktail in the evening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Number 36. Pastege de Nata at San Sanata, which is just off the main market area in Covent Garden, is the recent boom in pastry in London and personally one of my favourite treats on a go. Have it with coffee, have it on its own, you will love it. Number 37, Floral by Lima, globally known restaurant that serves some of the best Peruvian dishes. It actually is on a higher end scale, however, they do have a cozy downstairs cocktail bar that serves some of the best small dishes for affordable price. Also, the pisco sours are some of the best ones. Number 38, the Delicatessen Cafe from Petersham Nurseries is another perfect spot to wind down and watch how fresh pasta is made. It's also an Italian cafe that's been brought to the central London here by Petersham Nurseries and we're very thankful for that. Number 39, Sticks and Sushi. A true hidden jam that brings minimalistic Danish design with delicious Japanese cuisine. It's a perfect treat at the end of the night for you and your party, but booking in advance is a must. Number 40, Bridget's Bakery. An afternoon tea experience to remember. A spot not only for your tummy, but for the Instagram as well. Number 41, Abuelo brunch spot, a recent but very welcomed addition to the neighborhood. This cozy space is serving plenty of small dishes as well as great coffee. It's always busy, so if you spot a seat, grab it, you won't be disappointed. Number 42, Milk Train is a funky looking spot that serves a variety of ice cream with popcorn and candy floss. Bim up your Instagram game whilst enjoying a beautiful ice cream. Number 43, Lamb and Flag Pub, which is a classical British pub that's been serving its guests from 1772. It's known for its car scales and a selection of lager. Also, this establishment was frequented by Charles Dickens. Number 44, The Black Penny, coffee house that is serving a fantastic all day and brunch menu in unique and cozy environment known for its selection of coffees. Number 45. Compared to many London museums, London Film Museum is an exciting and newest addition to Common Garden scene. In 2008, it opened its doors and currently it boasts a collection of vehicles from James Bond movies. Exciting! Number 46. 
Neil's Yard. It's captivating courtyard that is quite easy to miss. It's fast approaching the status of not so hidden hidden gem. However, I still highly recommend coming here for its many delicious food options. Number 47, 26 Grains is known for its healthy food options and delicious coffee. It's also a great place to sit down, especially during the sunny days and watch how locals and tourists mix in a beautiful news yard. Number 48, Seven Dials, a beautiful area next to Covent Garden. This particular place was designed with practicality in mind, maximizing the number of houses built alongside the roads. Number 49, although there are seven streets here, the Seven Dials column has only six sundials, and this is due to the fact that it was commissioned before the number of streets went from six to seven. Number 50, this is a former warehouse for cucumbers and bananas. Nowadays, it's a Seven Dials market, a trendy food spot, and I can tell you how many times it has saved me when everything else was booked out in central London. Enjoy. Number 51. The first sandwich ever to be consumed by that name is claimed to have been eaten by the Earl of Sandwich in 1762 here in Covent Garden. Mmm. <laughs> Number 52. Covent Garden is home to some of the world Guinness records, my favorite one being the longest taxi journey in the world. The journey itself took a little over a year and clocked up £79,000 on a meter. Expensive! Number 53. Covent Garden is home to the, the oldest theatre in London. The Theatre Royal, dating back to 1663, is located on Drury Lane and soon to be playing Frozen. Number 54. Cecil Court is one of the best places for books in London. This little street is bursting with bookstores and shops selling all kinds of antique maps and memorabilia. It's also a perfect spot to find a gift for your book-loving friend. Number 55. Whilst it is debatable if this pub is a part of Covent Garden area, it is a true proper hidden gem which oozes with history and pub culture. So if you have some spare time, pop in and enjoy refreshing pints at the mill. That's a wrap. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And next time you are in Covent Garden, it's just going to be that much more memorable. Support your girl, follow Top Wave on Instagram. She works really, really hard, and she would really appreciate it. And as always, I'm Polly B, and I'm just excited to be here.